this is perhaps one of the scariest aspects of it. What we're talking about here is facial recognition by closed circuit television. Well, it starts with facial recognition, but we've now got to the stage where in China in particular, they can recognize you from the back by your gait, by all kinds of things. And what has happened is, and you can see the positive benefit, police want to arrest criminals or thugs or rowdies even in a football crowd. And so using facial recognition technology, they can pick a person out and arrest him or her. Well, okay, but what it can be used for good purposes in that sense in keeping law and order can also become, particularly in an autocratic state, become an instrument of control. And here's the huge dilemma which people try to solve. How much of your privacy are you prepared to sacrifice for security? There's a tension between those two things. Now, in China, you mentioned, and you're probably thinking about Xinjiang, where you've got a minority, a Muslim minority of Uyghur people. The surveillance level on them is, is unbelievable. Every few hundred meters down the street, they have to stop, they have to hand in their smartphones. The smartphones are loaded with all kinds of stuff by the government. Their houses have QR codes outside them as to how many people live there and all this kind of thing. And I don't know how many, it's way over a million, I believe, are being held as a result of what is being picked up by artificial intelligence systems in re-education centers. And the suspicion is that the, the culture is being destroyed and eradicated. That's the one hand, that's in one particular province. But elsewhere in China, we have now the social credit system that apparently will be rolled out in the entire country. We're given, say, you and I were given to start with, let's say, 300 social credit points. And we're being trailed. If we um, fail to put our rubbish uh, trash can out at night, there'll be marks against us. If we go to somewhere dubious or mix with someone whose political loyalties are suspect, we'll get more negative points. On the other hand, if we pay our debts on time and go green, so to speak, and all this kind of thing, we will amass more credit points. And then if we are going negative, the penalties kick in. We'll discover we can't get into our favorite restaurant. We'll discover we don't get that promotion or don't even get that job we apply for or that we can't travel, or that we can't even have a credit card. And this is being rolled out, and the list of penalties and, and things that have actually been recorded is just very serious. Now, what amazed me when I first came across this was the fact that many people welcome this. They yeah. think it's wonderful. They both, I've got a thousand points. How many have you got? And they don't realize that the whole of life is becoming controlled in the interests, ostensibly, of having a healthy society. So it is, talk about 1984. Now, this is not futuristic speculation. This is already happening. George Orwell, you mentioned him, who wrote 1984. He talked about Big Brother watching you and uh, that technology would eventually, it is doing it. This is narrow AI. This is not futuristic in any way. It's what's actually happening at the moment. And you mentioned briefly the fact that all this stuff exists in the West, except, and the point has been made forcibly, it's not quite yet under one central authority and control, but it is coming. We have credit searches. We have all kinds of stuff that is beginning to creep in in the US and in the UK and I presume also in Australia. And also we have even police forces here, I believe, who want the whole caboodle in here, who want to be able to exert a much more serious level of control. 
And it is frightening because what it does for human rights is, is well. So, so it occurs to me that, you know, I love history, as I've mentioned. Authoritarian regimes have collapsed under their own weight. Typically, the people have risen up one way or another and there's been an overturning. We've never had autocratic regimes that have had this surveillance capacity. There's, you know, an estimated 400 million closed circuit television sets in China. That, that's one for about every three people. I mean, it's mind boggling. Oh, it is mind boggling. And even here in the UK, what I'm told is that you're on a closed circuit TV camera every five minutes when you're moving around. So it is very serious. And of course, the irony is, as I hinted at earlier, here we are with our smartphones that have got all these capacities, certainly at the audio level, and we're voluntarily wearing them. So we're voluntarily ceding uh, part of our autonomy and our rights, really, to, to these machines when we don't really know what is being done with all the information. So we have a huge problem. And someone has said we're sleepwalking into all of this so that we're captured by it, we're imprisoned by it, and we wake up too late because the central authority has got so much control that we cannot escape anymore.